Hello, everyone, and welcome to this very ex uh, exclusive SNS interview. My name is Taji Leundi, and today we'll be discussing the disastrous oil spill off the coast of Mauritius in the Indian Ocean. As a bit of a background, uh, on the 25th of July, the oil carrier ship MV Wakashio, carrying 4,000 tons of fuel oil, hit a coral reef southeast of Mauritius. The ship broke up as salvage operations were ongoing. This was just last Thursday, so it's been quite a while. And it's an estimated that uh, it's uh, an estimated 1,000 uh, tons of uh, fuel oil was spilled into the into the ocean. Now, the most important thing about this is that the area is um, of a couple of lagoons, and these are sanctuaries for rare sea wildlife. And this is one of the most one of the world's richest uh, marine ecosystems. So it is a major disaster in that area. So what has been the impact of, of the oil spill on the country and the response from the government and other agencies? We have the honor to speak to former president, uh, Bibi Amina, Firdaus uh, Grib Fakim. She's online with us um, and she is a Mauritanian, uh, Mor Mauritian politician and biodiversity research scientist, which is very appropriate, and served as the sixth president of Mauritius from 2015 to 2018. It's wonderful to have you on the program, madam. Thank you for uh, taking your time to, to speak to us. Good morning, and thank you for having me. Thank you very much. So what's the situation right now? It's been almost a month, and suddenly everything broke loose. Um, as you have rightly said, uh, the ship uh, uh, MV Wakashio approached our waters on the 23rd of July and it crashed, as you have rightly said, on the 25th. And uh, then uh, the first we heard is on the 7th of, well, 6 at night and 7th in the morning, that we learned that there is now a major oil spill in the southeastern coast of, of Mauritius, not very far from the airport. And... Uh, what uh, stunned all of us is, uh, first of all, as uh, you will gather from the dates I'm citing, is the delay in the response. Mm -hmm. And uh, my, first, my first reaction to the press uh, when they then spoke to me, I said, why did we not remove the oil as a matter of priority? Because had this been done, uh, we, may not, uh, you know, we may be talking today because there would have been no crisis per se. But we are where we are, and as we speak, yesterday, um, the first, the, the 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 foremost part of the ship has now been sunk uh, in the ocean, and uh, we're still left with uh, oil, uh, which has reached uh, the coast. And as you have rightly said, and I think people know that we are a biodiversity hotspot. So for us scientists. The priority of priorities is to carry out a full-fledged assessment to know the damage. We are still very early days uh, to know what has happened. But I think if we go by past experiences from countries that have experienced oil slick, I think we have a few pictures in our mind. And unfortunately, we have been seeing that with some turtles, with some birds, and the mangroves which are completely uh, covered with, with this heavy oil. So for us, uh, it's just uh, uh, a disaster in the waiting, and we're just hoping that uh, the cleanup operation will start as soon as possible. It has started, so we need to get rid of the bulk of the oil before we go into the finer details of going into the analysis of the waters to make sure that the seafood coming out of there, of course, is safe for human consumption, amongst other things. Uh, the country must have an uh, environmental management sort of organization. Um, we have a council here in Tanzania. Um, who else are you working with uh, to, uh, to diminish the dis disaster? Um, you know, as soon as uh, the spill uh, happened, as I said, in the first week of August, there has been a rallying call by many uh, friendly countries. We've got France, we've got, uh, well, Japan has sent its experts. Uh, we got some, uh, uh, some material coming out from India as well. And uh, we've got a whole load of countries that are, you know, coming. And myself, uh, in my inbox, I'm getting loads of uh, offers of uh, material and a call also uh, from scientists to come and, and help. So the call is there. So it will be a matter of coordination here locally so that we can actually get the maximum of experts and, of course, the maximum of expertise 
so that we can handle better uh, the, 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 after, the, after, the aftermath of this oil spill because we know it is not going to be a very pretty sight. Let's talk about the human aspect of it. Um, obviously, it, this is going to have a great impact economically for the people, particularly women, I believe. <laughs> Yes, you know, we are coming out where well, we've had the countries closed since March uh, with the COVID, so the airspace is closed. So this has had a direct impact on the tourism sector. And, uh, you know, tourism sector uh, brings in 24% of our GDP. And what we have seen already is the wrecking of people working in the informal sector. Um, people in the tourism sector, in the tour, well, in the hotels, and you know all the all the aggregate sectors around tourism has been badly impacted already by the COVID nineteen. Now, as we are coming out of it, I mean, this couldn't have come at a worse time. So we are we are now having to uh, to do a very very a big. Um, communication spree so as to you know comfort uh, the, the tourists that it is still a safe destination it is because it's, this is happening in one part but of course we live in in a, in a social media era and of course communication era information goes around at, at a very very uh, high you know the communication as, at the end of a click so we're going to have to do uh, a lot of communication and this is something that we could have done without now over and above this the fisheries sector is impacted, especially this part, because, you know, there used to be a port in the, during the French colonial days. It was a major port, but uh, it is now uh, a place where not only fishing happens, but also uh, the tourism sector, because as I said, we are very near uh, a marine park. And there has been a lot of tourists who used to come there, well, they still can come, uh, to see wildlife in its pristine state. And uh, so this has been badly impacted. Women, of course, because in the informal sector, women, of course, are uh, the brunt, they bear the brunt of the economic fallout whenever there is one. So it's, it's, a, it's a whole new paradigm we have to address and uh, we have to move very fast. So again, we make an appeal to volunteers who can help us uh, to actually you know, get the message out that uh, we need to bring in, of course, the sciences as well um, so that we can do the analysis and make sure that the lagoon is safe, not just for, for bathing and for, for fish and everything else. So uh, it, it's, uh, we are still at the early part of the curve. All right. In, in our research, we noted that in 2016, um, a near disaster was averted. Um, how much have you learned since then? And I want to link up the uh, countries closest to you, uh, Madagascar, perhaps in the East African coast. Um, how are you cooperating together, even at this present moment? Yes, you know, Mauritius uh, belongs to many of these blocks with the African Union, the ESC, and the Indian Ocean Commission. Yes, there has, as I said, there has been a lot of cooperation with the Indian Ocean Commission because Indian Ocean Commission, you know, there's so many countries, and I've already cited a few countries that have already brought in the help. But for us, uh, uh, the cooperation now must go beyond just cleaning up. We have to do the final monitoring. And this is where we can appeal uh, to many of uh, our partner countries who have, of course, the very best in terms of scientific capacities uh, to come and, and give us a hand. All right, very well. Now, let's talk about the science. Um, there is something, something called coral bleaching. Um, now, that's going to impact the area for ages. And we might see a loss, lo loss of the coral reef, perhaps uh, a lot of the uh, uh, wild, wildlife there, so to say marine life there. Um, how is this going to play out in the future? And what is the concern with, with you scientists? Um, coral bleaching, you know, is, is happening uh, not just in Mauritius, but across the world. And the prime uh, culprit for color, coral bleaching has been climate change because we are witnessing the acidification of the ocean because of the absorption of the greenhouse gas. Uh, we're also seeing the rise in temperature of the water. That's also a, a big factor. But what is the issue here is that this oil spill has happened very near a marine park. We are talking about an area of over 360 hectares. And also next to the marine park is um, an island, which is called Ilo Zigret. And to us, this is a very, very important symbolism of conservation success. So what this oil spill is going to threaten is precisely reverse 
20 years plus of conservation effort, which has, which has seen um, renewal in uh, the birds, the endemic bird, the indigenous bird, the indigenous plant species, uh, back to its, to its normal, well, not normal state, but of course we're doing a lot in terms of, salvage, of, of uh, salvaging this flora and this fauna. And again, just to give an idea, Mauritius is a very, very small island in the Indian Ocean, but we contribute around 7% of the conserved fauna in the world. Mm -hmm. So we're really punching above our weight here in terms of conservation effort. So having this oil spill next to that islet, having this oil spill next to the marine park, because there, again, for, for, for people who are listening to us, we have some samples, which, which is known as the brain coral, which dates back to about a thousand years. And all these are at risk. And so the, the conservation effort, the cleanup effort has to be done very, very quickly so that we can salvage whatever we can because as i said we are a biodiversity hotspot we are discovering things that you know we're still contributing to science in terms of new information new species so it's uh, it's you know it's a it's a disaster for those who have been involved in this effort for so long and you know it, it is terrible we'd love to hear a rallying call from you um, from countries in the region neighboring neighboring regions as well as from the rest of the world Yes, yes, we make a call. And uh, as I said, uh, to get the science back, because we need collection, we need to start, uh, uh, you know, doing surveys. Uh, so we'll need uh, a lot of data uh, so that we can make the case pay for, for claims, because we'll have to, uh, to be making uh, the case for, for, the, for, for claim for insurance. But over and above this, we still need to get people on the ground to be able to collect data so that we create really a full-fledged database and carry on with the baseline study that's happened so far. So we will be making a rallying call to all scientists and, of course, to all helpers who can come and give us a hand. Well, we hope that through this exclusive interview, that, that call will be heard across Africa. Uh, we're very happy to have spoken to you. We wish you success and um, we'll be together um, in, in heart and mind as well uh, as, as you go um, th through this uh, difficult time after COVID, as you noted, and now this disaster in this very, very uh, important area in the world, in fact, in the Indian Ocean. Thank you so much. Thank you for, for having me and uh, hope to visit you soon as soon as the airspace opens up because Tanzania is still very close to my heart. Thank you very much. You're most welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Um, this has been ex an exclusive interview um, through SNS. Um, I hope you've truly enjoyed it. Uh, please continue to follow on the issues. We'll continue to update you as much as possible. And we'd certainly love to say thank you very much to the former president, Bibi Amina Feridaus Garib Fakim, for spending time with us and educating us on uh, what's going on there. And of course, her rallying call to scientists in Africa and elsewhere in the world. Thank you for watching.